the Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle. The Shravaka vehicle and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle together are known as the Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle. Both vehicles focus on practicing the path to liberation. The practitioners of the Pratyaka Buddha vehicle have sharper faculties and deeper insights because they are solitary realizers who attain awakening through observing the causes and conditions in the world. Cultivating renunciation is one of the preliminary practices of the Shravaka and Pratyakya Buddha vehicle. Renunciation is the determination to transcend the three realms and the cycle of samsara. The teachings on the three types of suffering and impermanence are very important. If you truly understand them, you will gradually generate renunciation. Of course, merely listening to these teachings once is far from enough. You should listen repeatedly for dozens or even a hundred times. Moreover, while listening, you should also experience and contemplate them in your daily life, and gradually your renunciation will arise and become firm. When worldly people experience the three types of suffering, their desire, anger, and ignorance grow. When the suffering of suffering arises, their anger grows. When the suffering of change arises, their desire grows. When neutral feelings arise, their ignorance grows. This is the pattern of worldly people who don't study the Dharma. When they experience suffering, their desire, anger and ignorance grow. When practitioners experience the three types of suffering, they will cultivate renunciation or compassion. Hence, their renunciation or compassion will grow. For example, when the suffering of change arises, those who practice the path to liberation will observe it and recognize it as suffering, no longer seeing it as happiness and no longer clinging to it, thereby overcoming their attachment. Cultivating renunciation is a compulsory practice of the path to liberation. With renunciation, one can practice according to the 37 factors of enlightenment, thereby eliminating the six root afflictions of desire, anger, ignorance, doubt, arrogance and wrong views. Wrong views include the belief in I and mine based on the five aggregates, the attachment to the extremes, the attachment to wrong views and the attachment to rules and practices. By eliminating the notion of I and eradicating self-attachment, one can gradually attain the first stage of awakening. It's not easy to cultivate renunciation. It sounds easy, but it's actually hard. The wealthy and influential people in the world, including emperors and generals, cannot achieve it. They are admired and respected by others. People would even scream and feel honoured when they see these celebrities. In fact, such people are quite pitiable. They don't have renunciation and don't understand it. It's very hard for them to cultivate renunciation, even harder than reaching the heavens. There are two types of people for whom it is difficult to cultivate renunciation. The first type of people haven't fully believed in the cycle of reincarnation. Of course, we don't need to mention those who completely don't believe in reincarnation. 
This refers to those who haven't fully believed in it. They enjoy practicing the ten virtuous actions, seeking wealth and prosperity in this life, wishing to be reborn in heavens after death. Other religions haven't fully understood reincarnation, so they think and act like this. The second type of people completely believes in the cycle of reincarnation. They know that samsara is frightening and that they need to transcend it. However, due to their strong attachment and karmic habits, they cannot change the situation. They know renunciation and have some renunciation, but due to their strong attachment and karmic habits, they find it hard to cultivate renunciation. They can only gradually cultivate it in worldly life, in samsara. They are also suffering. Although they know that they need to transcend samsara, their afflictions and karmic habits are so strong that they are unable to eliminate them. In the age of Dharma decline, it's quite beneficial to observe precepts. We are very fortunate to stay away from temptations and negative people. Our Dharma center is quite tranquil. Even if you have karmic habits, they won't arise here. It's just like a drug addict going to a rehabilitation center. Since nobody uses drugs, it becomes much easier to quit. In the mundane world filled with the five desires, it's very hard to quit drugs. Our monastic community has created such a great place for you to support each other. Everything that a practitioner on the path to liberation does is for the sake of liberating her from samsara. Although they also help other sentient beings and cultivate loving kindness, their purpose is to deal with their own afflictions and karmic habits. They practice generosity to overcome greed, practice patience to overcome anger, and practice discipline to overcome laziness or indiscipline, and so on. They focus on their own spiritual practice and dislike the three realms. In particular, they fear suffering. They fear death and suffering. They wish to eradicate suffering completely and transcend the three realms quickly. It's quite hard for them to generate bodhicitta. Therefore, without enough practice on the path to liberation, it's impossible to generate bodhicitta. If one is suffering greatly and has strong karmic habits, how can they generate bodhicitta? So, we need to practice the path to liberation. As we progress in our practice, have less suffering, and develop some wisdom from emptiness. We will discuss this topic later. The Buddhisattva vehicle is different. Number four, the Buddhisattva vehicle. There are two types of Buddhisattvas, ordinary Buddhisattvas and enlightened Buddhisattvas. Ordinary Buddhisattvas as described in the Flower Adornment Sutra, refers to the ordinary beings who have generated great aspirations. Such practitioners, after generating renunciation and the wisdom of no self in person, cultivate bodhicitta and generate the aspiration to benefit all sentient beings. However, They haven't attained the first stage of awakening. The second type of bodhisattva refers to those who have generated bodhicitta and attained the first stage of awakening. It is this group of bodhisattvas that practices the bodhisattva path. 
People with the innate nature of a Buddhasattva have cultivated compassion well in their past lives, so it is easier for them to cultivate great compassion and bodhicitta and aspiration in this life. They practice the Buddhasattva path while also practicing the path to liberation. On one hand, they are helping sentient beings and guiding them to practice. On the other hand, they are eliminating their own afflictions and self-attachment. While benefiting others, their own afflictions and karmic habits are gradually eliminated. On the Bodhisattva path, one benefits oneself and others at the same time, which is remarkable. It is the middle way, which is far better than the Hinayana path. Hinayana practitioners only practice the path to liberation. They have gone astray and fallen into the extreme of emptiness. Our centre is a Mahayana Dharma centre, so we take the middle way, the Bodhisattva path. Of course, if an unenlightened Bodhisattva doesn't have stable wisdom of no self in person, when they help sentient beings, they may inadvertently regress under the influence of worldly virtuous people. This is because they haven't cultivated renunciation well and haven't attained the stage of acceptance, which is a stage where one will no longer regress. They are unaware of their situation and they mistakenly believe that they are practicing the Bodhisattva vehicle. In fact, they are practicing the human and heavenly vehicle. Such bodhisattvas are fake bodhisattvas. They are unaware of their situation and consider themselves quite good. Their renunciation is not clear and their bodhicitta is fake. Number 5. The Buddha Vehicle The insight of the Buddha vehicle is the highest. Simply put, it refers to comprehending the mind and seeing the truth after having eradicated the root ignorance. Comprehending the mind means clearly seeing all consciousnesses. This refers not only to the first six consciousnesses, but also to the seventh and eighth consciousnesses. One needs to clearly see all these consciousnesses and completely comprehend them. This requires deep concentration. Seeing the truth means seeing the true nature of reality. Only after comprehending the mind can one see the true nature of reality. You need to clearly see all eight consciousnesses in order to transcend them, to see the truth and to realize the non-duality of subject and object, the non-duality of mind and object. Here we are just briefly talking about this topic. The so-called seeing the truth means seeing the true nature of reality. However, the truth is beyond forms. How can we see it? The patriarchs said that one should start to practice after attaining enlightenment. This means that after enlightenment, one should strive to maintain the spiritual attainment. After truly comprehending the mind and seeing the truth, one still needs to work on maintaining the enlightenment state for a long time. The first step is to maintain the enlightenment state. Once this step is done well, one should gradually start to use skillful means to spontaneously benefit sentient beings. After one has maintained the enlightenment state well, one should gradually start to apply skillful means. This is the practice after enlightenment. After enlightenment, it's still essential to continue practicing. Currently, 
we don't need to think about such advanced practices. The Buddha is free from any obstacles. He has attained great liberation and can apply great skillful means. The Buddha vehicle is the highest vehicle. Some people wish to practice the Buddha vehicle. However, I advise you not to daydream about it. Currently, very few people are qualified to practice it. If you are qualified, I would tell you privately. For now, you should first work in the kitchen. Unfortunately, we don't have a rice pounder now. Otherwise, you might have a chance of attaining enlightenment. Some people daydream about attaining enlightenment, like the sixth patriarch. 